one million years ago, long before the flood, there was a volcanic eruption here on the Lazak Plateau. The eruption was so strong that it split the Kombalu mountain in two. The north part collapsed over nearly a kilometer. This geological accident formed a labyrinth of galleries. In these fissures, called fleurine, air can circulate from the bottom of the scree to the surface of the rocky plateau. Mother Nature, in her wisdom, let humans dig out the cellars that are well aired and temperate thanks to the fleurine. They draw in warm air from the outside to heat the cellars and evacuate air from the cellars when it's cold outside. This phenomenon only happens in the village of Roquefort and is one of the essential conditions for making the cheese of the same name. In 1411, King Charles VI of France decreed the monopoly of Roquefort cheesemaking. In 1961, the geographical limit of the maturing zone was set, two kilometers long by 300 meters wide. It was here that in 1906, Paul Alric founded the Papillon Company and defined the methods of Papillon Roquefort cheesemaking. In those days, the company produced about 100 tons of Roquefort. In 1951, Albert Alric took over the management of Papillon, followed by his son Gérard from 1980 to 1998, when the Farine family picked up the torch. Annual production today is 2,000 tons. Rye bread plays a vital role in Roquefort Papillon cheesemaking. Inside the bread is where Penicillium Roqueforti develops, the fungus that gives the cheese its taste and its green and blue marbling. To keep up the tradition and have end-to-end -end control over production, Papillon has had its own baker's oven since 1975. Every year in September, the Papillon baker makes about 300 loaves of rye bread which are used to produce the Penicillium Roqueforti used in the Papillon recipe. These loaves are well baked on the outside, but the insides are still moist. This is where the Penicillium Roqueforti Papillon strain is injected. When the moon is full, the fungus develops inside the loaves. The Lacon U is the only breed allowed by the protected designation of origin certificate. The flocks of farmers chosen by Papillon graze on the Levezou slopes and in the Tarn Valley. Here the air is pure and the grass is lush. From December to the end of June, the ewes are milked twice a day in the sheepfolds, which are regularly inspected by Papillon. The cheese-making process is made up of several stages. Milking, rennetting and curdling, cutting, mixing, molding, powdering of Penicillium Roqueforti, salting, then pricking, and finally refining. The milk is immediately transferred to the dairy in Villefranche de Panna, set in the middle of the milking zone. Stored in tanks, the milk receives the rennet, which causes coagulation and ensures the transformation of the milk into curd. This step allows the milk to thicken and gives the cheese a texture almost like gel. This is the first stage of all cheese making. After a few hours, the curdled milk is cut into small cubes, then mixed to separate the grains of curd used to make the cheese from the lactose, also called whey. 
These movements are the same as those used long ago. The Papillon master cheesemaker observed, studied and analyzed them. This is how the equipment was perfected to scrupulously reproduce the same gestures. Now comes the most important part in making Roquefort cheese. The Penicillium Roqueforti Papillon, taken from the inside of the rye bread baked in their oven, is powdered over the curd. This is what gives Papillon its taste and its characteristic blue veins. Now it's time to pour the curd into moulds to give it a round shape called wheels. The wheels are turned over and drained for almost two days. Then comes the salting stage. A regular and very accurate dose of coarse salt is placed by machine on each side of the cheeses. Before they leave for the cellar, the wheels are pricked, an operation which consists of pricking the wheels all the way through to help the development of the Penicillium Roqueforti. From the moment it reaches the dairy, the full fat on pasteurized sheep's milk is regularly tested and analyzed in the Papillon laboratory. All the dairy equipment has been designed to guarantee the highest level of hygiene without modifying the characteristics of the cheese. Now, and only now, can the cheese be placed in the half-light and the cool of the natural caves, where the fleurines maintain 98% humidity and a temperature of 10 to 11 degrees Celsius. The master refiner watches over it patiently and checks it regularly. After three weeks, the vitality of the Penicillium Roqueforti can be evaluated. However, a lot more time is needed for the Roquefort Papillon to reach maturity will stay at least three months in the commune of Roquefort. In a permanent quest for quality, our cheeses are thoroughly checked and selected before being wrapped. Here at last is the Roquefort Papillon. It's come a long way. Its paste is shiny and white, with the signature blue veins throughout. Just taste it on a slice of good bread. It can also be used in cooking to enhance some of your recipes. Today, Papillon offers a wide range of cheeses to suit every palate. Papillon. A century of passion.